Good morning again, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to the book of Colossians, chapter 4. This video is another collaborated effort. And um, as any collaboration with the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God, the ground and the pillar of the truth, um, it is in the hands of the Lord to do with it as he sees fit, as he will lead and guide. And um, I'm going to step on some of your toes today. But I understand why the Lord would give this now. <laughs> I get it. And uh, like I said, this is this is a collaboration. And um, as the Lord will, his will be done. So with that said, Colossians chapter four, we are going to be reading verses one under verse six. You are expected to follow me along. OK. Got a lot of scripture we're going to go through today. I hope you're ready for it. You hear my <laughs> you hear my dog in the background, probably. <laughs> Colossians chapter four, verses one under verse six. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer. Be instant in prayer. Continue in prayer. Be instant in prayer. Be in prayer a lot. Pray often without ceasing. And watch in the same with thanksgiving. In everything, give thanks for the good, for the bad. With all, praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. The mystery of Christ. What is that? How that the Jew, the Gentiles are grafted into the tree of the Jew and that salvation has come unto all through Jesus Christ. Okay, because we Gentiles, like I said, have been grafted into the tree of the Jew, okay, to make them jealous. Hence, their um, rejection of the gospel is our benefit. They are the enemies of the gospel for our sake. But we are brought in to make them jealous. See? To bring them back onto their God that they will see through us the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. Okay? Verse 4. That I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. As you ought to speak. How do you how are you ought to speak? According to the scriptures. The scriptures. Okay? Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Walk in wisdom. What is wisdom? The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding, right? Walk in wisdom, the fear of the Lord, toward them that are without, redeeming the time. You need to mind how you walk out there, especially right now, especially right now. 
and has always been thus, but right now, so close to the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away. We are to fear God rather than man. And to walk in the fear of the Lord is to walk according to the scriptures. Not according to our own things that we come up with. But according to the scriptures, brethren, that's how we are to walk. We are to fear God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. We are to walk with, uh, walk in wisdom. It doesn't say walk with, it says walk in wisdom. Walk in the fear of the Lord. Let your speech be always with grace. Seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to give an answer to every single man. You give an answer unto every single man of the hope that is within you. Yes, but, you know, there are foolish and unlearned questions that you are to avoid. There are questions that are asked just to cause strife and debate. Okay, passive-aggressive questions uh, asked rhetorically. Okay. Which is a sign, of, which is a tactic of manipulation. Okay? Those who have a sincere heart, uh, who love the Lord and are seeking truth and ask of you questions, that's different. But like I said, there are those who will ask questions who don't want to know the answer or just uh, looking to cause strife and debate. These are called foolish and unlearned questions. There are those out there who they will ask you legitimate questions and you'll answer them. Then they'll come up with a hundred more. And then you can answer them a hundred more times and they'll keep coming up with, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. And rather than trusting in the scriptures, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. Those are what you are to avoid. Look at verse 3. With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. A door of utterance. That he would give you, open the doors for a chance to witness, to glorify him through your testimony, through the way you behave, through the way you walk. Go to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Now, number one, who is the door? Our Lord Jesus Christ is the door. Okay? No man cometh unto the Father but by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 on to verse 13. The church that's in Philadelphia, the people, not a building. Okay, this is one, this body of believers was one of only two that did not receive a rebuke from the Lord. Okay, for our instruction and in righteousness here, what we're looking at. Okay, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, separate. He that is true. He that hath the key of David, the key of David, meaning the king. He is the king. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. When he come back at his second coming, he's going to rule as king in Jerusalem in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? He has the key of David. He is the king of the Jews. The king, king of kings. Lord of Lords. He that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. You know, if this counsel and work be of men, it will come up to naught. Refrain from these men, lest ye be found. Fight against God. 
Now, so of course, what did our Lord say unto Pontius Pilate? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, what did he say unto him? Thou couldest do nothing against me unless it were given you from above. He opens, and no man can shut it. He shuts, and no man can open it. Beg your pardon. Verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. No man can shut it. Oh, they'll try. They'll try. The devils and whatnot. But no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will come, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Now, Verse 9, the synagogue of Satan. A lot of people like to take that and say that it's the Jews. It's the Jews. No, it's the, it's the Roman Catholic Church. It's the Jesuits. Okay? Okay? They say they are Jews. God's chosen people. The apple of his eye. But they are not. Okay? Meaning, replacement. Replacing the Jew. Which... Roman Catholicism teaches, okay? They teach that it's for the church themselves. That the time of Jacob's trouble is the great tribulation and it's for the purification of the church, okay? That is precisely what Roman Catholicism teaches, okay? But also for our instruction in righteousness as well, uh, looking at verse 9, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Um, say that they are of the church of the living God and are not, but do lie. Interesting, huh? Verse 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. The word of my patience. And patience brings what? Experience. And experience brings what? Hope. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Hold fast that which thou hast. You hold on to this, the scriptures. You adhere to the scriptures. Because the hour is late, brethren. And remember, he opens and no man can shut it. He shuts and no man can open There's a little space still for doors for a door of utterance. But are we praying still to this very day that the Lord still open a door of utterance even in these times? Ah, yeah, I kind of addressed this yesterday, but going to be getting a little bit more deeper into it today. Him that, verse 12, him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, capital S, saith unto the churches. 
You got ears to hear? And while we're here, look at verses 19 and 20 on to 19, verses 19 on to verse 22, okay? In Revelation chapter 3. Now for our instruction in righteousness, okay? I do not at all believe that doctrinally the book of Revelation is for us today. There are things within the, the book of Revelation for our instruction in righteousness, but this is more for the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? Verse 19, for example, right here, here's something that is uh, pertinent for us today. As many as I love, if you are of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted, of his bones and of his flesh. He loves you. His love is for you because you came to him on his terms and you belong to him. He bought you with his blood. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Remember about a door of utterance? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. And he with me. Right now, there is still time. There is still time. The doors have not been closed totally, brethren. You are aware of that, right? We are still here. We still draw breath as the church of the living God. There's still time. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. How many of you right now think that the doors are totally closed? Oh, but yeah, it's, it's pretty hard right now. As I have come to learn, though, for example, it is really dependent on your locality. For example, I know of a friend who, uh, a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, who tells me in the state which in he lives, the people uh, bowing down to the <laughs> and stuff like that is not as militant as it is, say, here in Illinois, in Illinois, where I live. Okay? There are other places, states within the Union, that are far more militaristic about these um, ordinances that the Jesuits have imposed. Okay? Than there are in other places, states within the Union. Okay? There is something to that. But from our perspective, and also from many, we think that the doors are totally closed? No, they ain't totally closed. They're closing. Yes. And why is that? Why is that? Because people love a lie. They don't want to hear the truth. They want to trust in men. And not on our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Who demands of us brokenness. Go to Luke chapter 10. Go to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10 was a little bit more pertinent, brother. Luke chapter 10. 
We are going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 24 in Luke chapter 10. About Luke chapter 10. This is for our instruction in righteousness. Okay. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay. You might, Brad, I know that some don't. So bear with me. This must be remembered because the hirelings in the church buildings, you know, these Christians, they do not rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? A lot of these devils do not rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth or you're going to be in all kinds of problems and be messed up. Okay? So, you know this. There are those who do not know this. Have have a little empathy. Think about those who do not. And bear with me. Okay? This is before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Doctrinally still under the law. Our Lord was sent unto the Jew first. Salvation is of the Jew. Okay? He was not sent but to the lost sheep of Israel. Okay? He was offering the Jewish people the kingdom of heaven. Okay? That, what, that is the context. That's what this is about. But for us to learn from this, for us to use today as, for our, as our instruction in righteousness, how we are to live out there, here's where it comes into play. For our instruction in righteousness. Okay? Okay? Are you with me? Now, Luke chapter 10, verses 1 under verse 24. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face, into every city and place, whither he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest, that he may open a door of utterance? Hmm. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. <laughs> yeah. And we don't have to learn the way of the wolf to overcome the wolf. Learning the ways of the wolf is helpful for us to better spot them, but then again, we have the scriptures. See, it's helpful, not needful. Remember that. Because if you are of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that spirit, dwells within you, and he will guide you into all truth. And he'll show you the phony and the true. Carry neither purse nor script, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. Why did he say that to them, by the way? Because as king, he would provide as king while there. See, see, the king was on the earth, offering the kingdom of heaven. Okay, that's why. Keep that in mind. And into whatsoever house ye enters, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. Now, what does this mean for our instruction in righteousness? The Lord will guide you unto someone of your own. You know, the church of the living God, his body. And there, abide with them. Okay? Because they are of the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. Okay? Have fellowship with that brother or sister. You know, whatever it is. Whoever it is. Okay? You don't go from house to house. You stay put as that as your base of operation, so to speak. Okay? Okay, that's what he's talking about. 
and into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. Okay? Now remember, the Jews require a sign. And the Greeks, Gentiles, seek after wisdom. I'm going to put in this video, if I can remember, the, um, the, a, video, a video I did about the Charismatics, the Care Catholics. Okay? Th th those guys, that religion is Catholic. Okay? And if you're Charismatic or Pentecostal, you need to get out of that. And I'm going to put the link for that in the description box of this video, if I remember. Okay? But remember... Signs were there for the Jews because the Jews require a sign. Okay? Remember that. That's why they were healing the sick and raising the dead and stuff like that. Because the king was there. A sign unto the Jews. Let's continue. But into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same, and say, even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. People won't hear what the Lord gives you to tell them. It's not you. It's the Lord that they are rejecting. They'll, they'll focus on you. Yes, they will. But in reality... It is the Lord that they have the problem with, not you. Not you. Wipe it off. Go to the next one, boy. See, because that, they're, they're without excuse. You hear the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. How that Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? All right? You hear that and reject it, you're a child of disobedience. You're without an excuse. It's on them, brethren, not you. But I say unto you, verse 12, that it shall be more tolerable in the day for Sodom than for that city. Why is that? Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted to heaven, shalt be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you heareth me. And he that despiseth you despiseth me. And he that despiseth me despiseth him that sent me. See, Sodom and Gomorrah, by the way, were overthrown like that. Okay? The angels went into Sodom. The men of Sodom compassed the house of Lot. And the men of Sodom wanted to know the men that came on to Lot. Know that knowing talked about in Genesis chapter 19. Okay, on the judgment that came on to Sodom was having sexual relations with them. Sodomy, that's where the term sodomy is derived from. Okay, and the Lord overthrew them like that. But see, what he's talking about are those who continue to hear the truth and continue to reject it. See, Sodom and Gomorrah, they were overthrown just like that. Today, the word of my patience, you've heard the truth and you, walk, you continue on rejecting it. 
It's worse for you than for Sodom and Gomorrah, which were destroyed just like that. Whereas you are being given grace and the long suffering of God. And yet you continue to reject. And unto you, the lost. That door of utterance, that door will be shut. When we, the church of the living God, are redeemed, this dispensation, brethren, you know this. I'm not talking to you. When this dispensation ends, salvation changes. Okay? Today it is by grace through faith. In the time of Jacob's trouble, which is there for the Jews, not the church like Rome will tell you, it's faith and works. You can't take the mark of the beast. Eternal security is not there except for 144,000 Jews. Your time is now. Because once we are redeemed, Boy, and brethren, knowing that, are you still seeking, praying for a door of utterance, even though they are being, they're closing, not closed. You know when they're going to be closed, brethren. But we're out of here. But on that. Let's continue from verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, Again, he was saying that in context to his people, the Jews, because he as king was right there, offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. Okay? All right? After the death, burial, and resurrection, which was the beginning of this dispensation, he ascended up into heaven. Uh, you read Fox's Book of Martyrs. Yeah, that's all I got to say about that. Let's continue. Verse 20, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. Don't get proud of yourself. Don't be like the five times I is mentioned, the eyes in the uh, parable of the Pharisee and the uh, publican. I fast two, uh, twice in a week. I give tithes of all. I, 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 yes. Don't let it go to your head. But see, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, wise in this world, that have the wisdom of men, that seek the admiration of men for their advantage. And it has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. In Isaiah chapter 28, about uh, line upon line, precept upon precept, you could tie that into that right there. Okay, you could tie this about being um, the between the wise and prudent. First ones mentioned in Isaiah chapter 28 are the babes weaned from the breast. Okay, and the wise and prudent are the ones who uh, onto them it is line upon line, precept, of, uh, precept upon precept. There's a difference between the two. Okay. I forget what video uh, I addressed that on, but um, I have I have addressed that in a video before. I'm not going to get into it now. Go find it if you know which one it is. <laughs> anyway, 
Verse 22. All things are delivered to me of my Father. And no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Now for our instruction in righteousness, there are many out there who want to get to heaven on their own merit, their own works, their own stuff. They want to see, they want to hear, but they just can't get over themselves. And the fear of the Lord is taught to them by the precepts of men. Catholicism. The Jesuits. That kind of stuff. Go to Acts chapter 4. Go to Acts chapter 4. You know, the hour is late, brethren, as, as we know this. But we still, until... Until the Lord takes us up. We need to seek him in all things. And to do what he would have us to do in the capacity that he would have us to do it. Whether it be online, whether it be out, outside, uh, passing tracks, standing in a gazebo on a square or whatever, uh, reading from the scriptures to whomever will hear. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. There are few that are going to be saved. Meaning, redeemed. Okay? At this hour, is this your prayer? Or are you holding back, saying it's not even worth it? Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, beginning at verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Now, here's the signs and wonders things, because this is before Acts chapter 7, when the Jews officially rejected the gospel. It was still the time of the Gentiles, but it was to the Jew first, and then it came to us to make them jealous. Okay? He still, knowing that they were going to reject it, this is the time of the Gentiles. Okay? You are the church of the living God, you know this, there are those who don't. Chill. Okay? But this was the time of the Gentiles, but our Lord, who is fair, just, and equal, still had to offer it, or else he wouldn't be a fair and just God. See? Okay? So, when he says this, in verse 30, By stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Because they were at first just going to the Jews, even though it was this current dispensation. Because he had to offer it to the Jew first, or else he wouldn't be just. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Do you pray for boldness? Because guess what, brother, sister? You need boldness. You need to have faith and confidence on our Lord Jesus Christ and in the Word, the authorized version of the Scriptures. And see, you got these Calvinist guys like MacArthur and Justin Peters, these wicked devils, who don't even have faith in the uh, Bibles that they preach from. Because unto them there is nothing perfect that they can hold 
in their hand. Go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> Beginning at verse 18. This is talking about the whole... You know what? Let's read verses 10 on to verse 20 in Ephesians chapter 6. Beg your pardon. Let's read that, okay? Okay. We're still at war, brethren. We're still to be out there in whatever it is to fight the good fight of faith until our Lord says, that's enough. Or, that's enough. You go from one unto the other. If the city that, you're, uh, that he sent you on to won't hear you, go on to the next one. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Who rules the world today? Satan is being allowed by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, to rule the world. It has given unto him from our Lord for judgment. Okay. And remember what we already looked at. They reject, uh, they reject what we say. They're, re they're rejecting our Lord Jesus Christ. And if they're rejecting our Lord Jesus Christ, they are rejecting the Father because Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? It's the Jesuits, not the Jews, that rule the world. Uh, who are the Jesuits? Catholic, Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon the Great. And if anyone tries to change that, tell you it's not Roman Catholicism they're working for the Jesuits because you got to remember Jesuits and Catholicism are one and the same especially today don't forget that verse 13 wherefore take on to you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the day in the evil day and having done all to stand is this not an evil day are these not the last days? Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on and having on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate uh, the breastplate covers your heart. Guard your heart with all diligence. Okay? Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, shod, having shoes on your feet, with the preparation, being ready to go out wherever the Lord will send you with the gospel of peace. You are ambassadors, ambassadors unto Christ. We have been given the ministry of reconcilia reconciliation to preach reconciliation. See. And have compassion on some, and others safe with fear. Pull them out of the fire. Okay? And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The shield of faith. Be firm in your faith. Don't let these little devils throw darts at you because remember you know you got the shield which covers your thing here your head but you do have to take your shield down to see the battle then put it right up it's and some people when you get the shield down to right here to where you can see that's when they throw in the darts but you have to what does it say okay have your loins girt with truth okay 
and having on the breastplate of righteousness, your loins girt with truth. Have courage. Your loins girt with truth. Remember what our Lord said unto Job? Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Your loins girt with truth. Have some courage. Having on the breastplate of righteousness, guarding your heart. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Study to show you thyself approved unto God, that you be a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study the word of God. Take that shield of faith. And take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. Knowing that you are saved. Having no doubt. Because see the breastplate protects your heart. And with the shield. You're defending from those darts. And then he mentions the helmet of salvation. You know you let down to see the battle. You're not saved. You're not saved. It's just believe. You're not safe. See? And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God. The authorized version of the scriptures. The perfect and errant, given by inspiration, word of God. This doesn't need to be changed. It changes me. And if you've got something that you need to tweak and tighten up, that you need to, yeah, yeah. Yea, rather, yea, hath God said. Sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Pray for one another. Pray for your brethren. Pray for your sisters. Or is your prayer time just for you? Do you labor, labor and wrestle in prayer for others? And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. We're kind of in bonds right now, aren't we? Being censored, being mocked at, and spit upon, and people just stopping their ears. So affrighted. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whosoever putteth their trust in the Lord shall be made safe. We gotta remember too, brethren, who calls us onto what we do? You? No. The Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Uh, go to Acts chapter 13. Just want to look at one verse. Acts chapter 13, verse 2. Uh, let, uh, uh, let's read verses 1 under verse 3. No, no, no. 1 under verse 4, excuse me, in Acts chapter 13. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, 
as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manaen, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Paul, and uh, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. The Holy Ghost. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse seventeen, specifically. But go ahead and read the entire chapter so you can get the whole context. The Lord is that spirit. The Lord Jesus Christ is that spirit. So as they were ministering unto the Lord, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And have your loins girt with truth. Have the courage to go where he's going to lead you. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, departed into Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Who sends you? Your church building? Your Jesuit-run cemetery school? Or is it the Lord? Hmm? Go to Jeremiah. Go to... Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> Open it right to the plate. Jeremiah chapter 18. And before we read Jeremiah, we're going to read Jeremiah chapter 18. Okay? Uh, before we read Jeremiah chapter 18... Let's read Jeremiah chapter 1. Now, remember, again, brethren, Church of the Living God, you know this. You know this. Again, there are those who are not of the Church of the Living God who are seeking, who watch. Have a little grace, okay? Jeremiah chapter 1. This is for our instruction in righteousness. You have to remember doctrinally, this is under the law, okay? It was faith and works during the dispensation of the law, okay? The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God could come and go, come and go. Eternal security was not there, okay? They had to offer animal sacrifice for their blood to cover sin, while the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the blood shed on the cross washes away all our sin while the blood of animals covers, okay? But, Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 and verse 10. Very quickly, before we get to Jeremiah chapter 18. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the worm, womb, worm, excuse me, worm, womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. Not you take it upon yourself, but whom he will send you unto. And whatsoever I command thee, thou, what, uh, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Whatever he commands you. Not whatever you can come up with out of your own mind. No, you truly need to depend on the Lord, especially when you're speaking through the scriptures. You have to depend on him. And not your own razzle and pedazzle. Not your, uh, 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 what's that thing called? Um, exegesis, hermeneutics, uh, homiletics. Yea, hath God said, Remember about how we read about the armor of God? Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. 
Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. How do you do that? Through the scriptures. Because the scriptures are sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing asunder the uh, marrow, bones, and spirit. That's Hebrew four, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Go look that up on your own time. Okay? But now, let's read uh, Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, by the way, is my favorite book in all of the scriptures. It's very pertinent on today, okay? Jeremiah was sent out of the Lord to preach a very unpopular message, one of repentance, one of turning away from what man thinks is good and returning on to the Lord. In the light of impending doom and destruction from Nebuchadnezzar, his own servant, being sent unto his people for judgment. This is Jeremiah, the prophet of the last days. And oh, his message was not popular. People wanted to have their ears tickled. They want to hear these good things. Prophesy unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. But no, not Jeremiah. Cost him a lot. But the Lord sent him. There were still open doors until Nebuchadnezzar came and whooped the snot out of Jerusalem. Even during this time, even after King Nebuchadnezzar came and uh, whooped the snot out of Jerusalem, there were still open doors. Are you still praying for a door of utterance, dear brother, sister? Jeremiah chapter 18. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Potter, making pottery. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. The whole world is in the hands of our Lord. He has allowed Satan to be king, the prince of the power of the air, the little G God of this world, for judgment. Okay, Our Lord Jesus Christ has allowed that. He's got the whole world in his hands. He is the potter. Verse 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning the nation, and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. People like to think that America there's hope for this nation of America. There ain't no hope. America is done. But see, that does not mean that all doors are closed. That does not mean that there is still not a door of utterance open unto us. That the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, has given us his body, the church of the living God. Verse 9. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. If it do evil in my sight, 
that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. America would have to cleanse itself of legalized murder. Abortion. Pornography. Drugs. The corrupt legal system. The hierarchical government, government that is in America, which is fashioned after the Roman Catholic Church, not fashioned as it was originally intended by the founding fathers of this nation. You know, it used to be that you were a citizen of whatever state you were in. Not anymore. See. There is no hope for this country of America, brethren. And see, a lot of people outside of our nation, I'm speaking to the American, my American countrymen right now, a lot of people outside of our nation get that. Why don't we? Your only hope is that the Lord Jesus Christ save you. And we as a church of the living God, are you still praying for a door of utterance? Verse 11. Now therefore go, now therefore go to speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you, and devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way, and make your ways and your doings good. Repent. Can America do that? No. No. Can an individual within this country do that? If they are broken of their self-righteousness and come to the Lord on his terms, and the Lord save him or her when they are broken and cry out to him, yes. But on a national level, You th you think President Harris and her front man smoking joke? You think that <laughs> Joe Biden is Catholic? President Harris, she's a Jesuit, Jesuit trained. And what is this? Uh, Donald Trump thinking about making a something in twenty twenty four? If we're even here that long, he's also Jesuit trained. Verse 12. Look at verse 12. And they said, there is no hope. But we will walk after our own devices. And we will everyone do the imagination of his evil heart. Ah, oh, there's no hope, so why not just eat and drink for tomorrow we shall die? Ah, oh, there's no hope, so glug, 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 glug. And where are the godly men? Being silenced, yes, but what about, what about you? Brad, they, they won't listen. Uh, ask for a door of utterance. Then you go to the next one. It ain't over yet. But see, look at that. Look at first, don't look at me. Look at verse 12. And they said, there is no hope. That's what the laws say. 
That's what the lost say. You and I, Church of the Living God, we have hope. Don't you? What, you think the Lord's lying to you? Verse 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Ask ye now among the heathen, Who hath heard such things? The virgin of Israel hath done a very horrible thing. Will a man leave the snow of Lebanon which cometh from the rock of the field? Or shall the cold flowing waters that come from another place be forsaken? Because my people have forgotten me. They have burnt incense to vanity. And they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths. To walk and pass in a way not cast up. For example, America. America has long ago said goodbye to the scriptures. America has long ago said goodbye to the God of the scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But they have embraced the God of this world, the little G, God of this world. Who is that? His name is Lucifer, that old devil, serpent, Satan, the red dragon, Leviathan. They have thrown away the ancient path and have brought in new paths. The Bibles. They, by the way, the authorized version of the scriptures. This is the true, pure word of God. Anything else is just the Bible. They want a new way. They want a new world order, which is nothing but returning back to the Dark Ages, which even the Jesuits, the Catholics, confess, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And because this nation has cast away truth of the scriptures. I've cast away the scriptures. They make them new gods. And wrath is coming. To make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing, everyone that passeth thereby shall be astonished and wag his head. Now remember, this is doctrinally speaking unto the Jews. This is for our instruction and in righteousness. I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will shew them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. Look at verse 18. Yeah, Jeremiah's message was not a popular one. It was a needful one. It was a true one. Sent of the Lord himself. Then said they, Come, and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Stop. They were saying, We delight to do the ways of the Lord, but their hearts were, were far from him. They heard the words of the law, like what it says in Ezekiel, they hear your words as one who plays well on an instrument. They love to hear, but they won't do them because their heart is gone. The law was there for just for a shoe to seem religious. And the wise, the wise in the world, and the prophet itching their ears, speaking unto them, Smooth things, prophesying deceits. For the law shall not perish from the priest. Priests of Baal. Nor counsel from the wise, the wise in this world. Nor the word from the prophet, the false prophets. Who prophesy. Peace, peace. And there is no peace. Come, and let us smite him with the tongue. 
wage relentless war, whether secretly or openly? And let us not give heed to any of his words. And look at this, verse 19 on to verse 22. Give heed to me, O Lord, and hearken to the voice of them that contend with me. Shall evil be recompensed for good? For they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them, and to turn away thy wrath from them. Therefore, deliver up the ch their children to the famine, and pour out their blood by the force of the sword, and let their wives be bereaved of their children, and be widows, and let their men be put to death, let their young men be slain by the sword in battle. Let a cry be heard from their houses when thou shalt bring a troop suddenly upon them. For they have digged a pit to take me, and hid snares from my feet. Yet, Lord, thou knowest all their counsel against me to slay me. Forgive not their iniquity, neither blot out their sin from thy sight, but let them be overthrown before thee. Deal thus with them in the time of thine anger. Pretty harsh, huh? you got to remember, too, Number one, this is doctrinally the Old Testament in a different dispensation. But number two, verse 18 shows us something about the heart of this people. Look at verse 18 again. Then said they, Come, and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come, and let us smite him with the, with the tongue, and let us not give heed to any of his words. Now, at this time, did the door shut? Or was there still a door open for utterance? Let's find out. Go to Jeremiah chapter 26 now. Jeremiah chapter 26. Jeremiah chapter 26, verses 8 on to verse 11. Now remember, Jeremiah was sent with the truth unto a backslidden people. And they didn't want to hear it. But the door was not shut yet. There was still a, there was still a door open for utterance. Even though Jeremiah despaired he felt he was he was the one prophet speaking this word. Not not I mean there were other prophets yes, but from this point of view, from this standpoint yes. Nobody wanted to hear it, and he continued because there was still a door open of utterance. Jeremiah chapter twenty six verses eight hundred verse eleven. Now it came to pass when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak unto all the people, that the priests and the prophets and all the people took him, saying, Thou shalt surely die, the priests and the prophets, the religious people. Your greatest enemy, Church of the Living God, as you know this, are from those who call themselves Christians. Your greatest adversaries are those who are religious. Not the atheist. No. But those who are yoked up with Babylon in the church building system. Those who are the coadjutors, the devils, who say they are Christians, but they're not at the church of the living God. Those are the biggest opponents unto us. The, you know, the, the, the coadjutors, the devils that have been sent in. Men who crept in unawares. False brethren, you know. It says there, the priests and the prophet. <laughs> Prophets. <laughs> yeah. Verse 9. Why hast thou prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh? 
and this city shall be desolate without an inhabitant. Why have you said this? Why, why, why would you say such a negative thing? God loves you. God's not mad at you. And all the people were gathered against Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the princes of Judah heard these things, then they came up from the king's house unto the house of the Lord and sat down in the entry of the new gate of the, of the Lord's house. Then spake the priests and the prophets unto the princes and to all the people, saying, This man is worthy to die, for he hath prophesied against this city, as ye have heard with your ears. Yeah. Not much has changed, has it? See, if you're going to speak the truth of the scriptures and not speak, uh, I'll prophesy the false Jesus, which is the son of perdition. Yeah, not much changes, does it? Go now to Jeremiah chapter 38. Were the doors closed? Or was there still, even during this time, was there still a door of utterance open? Is there still one there? Under all this adversity. Jeremiah chapter 38. Verses 4 on to verse 6. In Jeremiah chapter 38. Okay? Actually, let's read verses 1 on to verse 6 in Jeremiah chapter 38. We need to get a little bit of the context here. Jeremiah 38, verses 1 and verse 6. Then Shephatiah the son of Matan, and Gadaliah the son of Peshur, and Jukal the son of Shalemiah, and Peshur the son of Melchiah, heard the words that Jeremiah had spoken unto all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, He that remaineth in this city shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, but he that goeth forth to the Chaldeans shall live, for he shall have his life for a prey and shall live. Submit yourself unto the correction and punishment of the Lord. Submit unto the Lord's doing. Remember, the Lord referred unto Nebuchadnezzar as his servant. And I believe wholeheartedly that Nebuchadnezzar is up there right now. Thus saith the Lord, This city shall surely be given into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which shall take it. Doom is coming. Verse 4. Therefore the princes said unto the king, We beseech thee, let this man be put to death. For thus he weakeneth the hands of the men of war that remain in the city, and the hands of all the people, in speaking such words unto them. For this man seeketh not the welfare of this people, but the hurt. <laughs> you tell me, have you not had that charge level against you? Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. You as the church of the living God, You're speaking the word of God. You're living according to the scriptures. Giving testimony by the life you live according to the scriptures unto the lost. And they're calling you evil. You're warning them. The doors are closing. They ain't closed. Okay? And you're the enemy. You're not seeking the welfare of these people but the hurt, right? Ever heard that one? You're not doing this. Therefore, you're seeking the harm of these people. Right? You're telling people that they ain't good. That they're going to hell. Unless they come to the Lord on his terms, broken and contrite. 
and believe on him for what he did for you because of what you did unto him. And in that brokenness, you're going to call out, Lord, may he save you. See, you live this, you preach this. For this man seeketh not the welfare of this people, but the hurt. And here's King Zedekiah, little uh, sissy boy, King Hezekiah. Then Zedekiah the king said, Behold, he is in your hand. He even admits it, that he himself was a puppet unto the people. Governments ought to fear the people, not the people fear the government, yes. But Zedekiah, he was just a pushover. For the king is not he that can do anything against you. Then took they Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malchiah, the son of Hamalech, that was in the court of the prison. And they let down Jeremiah with cords. And in the dungeon there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire. Were the doors closed? Even after this? Go to Jeremiah chapter 43. Now, what's important to note about Jeremiah chapter 43, this is after Nebuchadnezzar came and whooped Jerusalem. And those of the poor, our Lord left there. And Ishmael, the, and this, uh, the son of, uh, I think it was, um, this, uh, this guy Ishmael, came and slain Gedaliah, who was left in charge of the remnant in Jerusalem. Okay? And Gedaliah was warned of Ishmael, but he said, ah, you're, you're not telling the truth about Ishmael. But Ishmael came and slew him. Okay? And then some of the guys, some of the proud men, we'll see that, went and chased off Ishmael. And he went to... Um, the king of Syria, I believe it was, because that's who sent him there. Okay? So, Nebuchadnezzar whooped Jerusalem, but he had mercy on the poor people, the remnant, and put Gedaliah in charge of them at that time. Okay? And they got rid of Ishmael. And then these men came to Jeremiah. Pray to the Lord for us. And whatever the Lord's going to tell, tell you to tell us, we're going to do it. Let's read that. Verse 42, uh, Jeremiah chapter 42. Verses 1 unto verse 3. Then all, uh, Jeremiah chapter 42. Okay, here's what they said. They proudly, boastfully said, whatever you tell us, that's what we're going to do. Then all the captains of the forces, and Johanan the son of Kera, and Jezniah the son of Hoshia, and all the people from the least even unto the greatest, came near, and said unto Jeremiah the prophet, Let we beseech thee, our supplication be accepted before thee, and pray for us unto the Lord thy God, even for all this remnant. For we are left but a few of many, as thine eyes do behold us. That the Lord thy God may shew us the way wherein we may walk, and the thing that we may do. So, hey, pray to the Lord for us. Go to verse 6. No, verse 5. Uh, let's read uh, to, the, to verse 6. Then Jeremiah the prophet said unto them, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray unto the Lord your God according to your words. And it shall come to pass that whatsoever thing the Lord shall answer you, I will declare it unto you. I will keep nothing back from you. Remember how we read about uh, putting on the whole armor of God? You do what the Lord tell you to do. You speak what the Lord gives you to speak. 
and you have faith and confidence and trust on him, that your loins be girt with truth, have some courage. Was there not here a door of utterance still available, even after all they went through? Then, then they said to Jeremiah, The Lord be a true and faithful witness between us. If we do not even according to all things for the which the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God, note that it doesn't say the Lord our God, ah, the Lord thy God shall send thee to us. Whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God. To whom we send thee, that it may be well with us when we when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. And what does the Lord say? What does the Lord say? Verse nineteen. Jeremiah chapter 42. Verse 19. The Lord has said concerning you, O remnant of Judah, Go ye not into Egypt. Know certainly that I have admonished you this day. The Lord says clearly, Go ye not into Egypt. Is that what they wanted to hear? They said, whatever it was, they said in verse 6, whatever the Lord says to you to give to us, we're going to do it. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Whether we like it or we don't like it. You're not a good person. There's none righteous, no, not one. You need to be broken of your self-righteousness. And in that brokenness, we will have godly sorrow. See, and that brokenness that you ain't good, that you deserve to go to hell, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, the fear of going to hell because you are worthy to go there and that you ain't good, knowing that the Lord died and shed his blood to cleanse you of your sin and it's your fault that he went to that cross. See? You don't want to hear that, do you? No, you want to believe yourself a good person just by believing and skipping over all that nasty stuff when the Lord has admonished you. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. What do we see here? See, there was still a, there was still a door of utterance there. What did these guys do in light of this? In clear instruction of what he wanted, the Lord wanted them to do. Beg your pardon for that. What did he want? What did they do? Jeremiah 43, verses 1 on to verse 7. And it came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking all unto all the people, all the words of the Lord their God, for which the Lord their God had sent him to them, even all these words. Then spake Azariah the son of Hoshiah, and Johanan the son of Kerah, and all the proud men. And remember about Satan, he is a king over all the children of pride. Job chapter 41, you read that on your own time. Saying unto Jeremiah, Thou speakest falsely. The Lord our God hath not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. Uh, what did they say in Jeremiah 42 verse 6? But Baruch the son of Neriah sendeth thee on against us, for to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they might put us to death and carry us away captives. 
into Babylon. So Johanan, the son of Kera, and all the captains of the forces, and all the people obeyed not the voice of the Lord to dwell in the land of Judah. But Johanan, the son of Kera, and all the captains of the forces took all the remnant of Judah that were returned from all nations, whither they had been driven, to dwell in the land of Judah, even men and women and children and the king's daughters, and every person that Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had left with Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah, the prophet, and Baruch, the son of Neriah. They took the prophet with them. So they came into the land of Egypt, for they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Thus they came even to Tephanes. Was there still a door of utterance given? Even after all of that. Jeremiah 44. Verses 15 on to verse 19. Now, in Jeremiah chapter 44, you will read about the queen of heaven, how they continue to burn cakes onto the queen of heaven and pour out drink offerings onto her. Even in light of all that they had been admonished of, warned of, and what they had been through, they still refused the truth. But right here now, the door was closed. But here there was this little thing to remind them in Jeremiah chapter 44. And this queen of heaven is around today. It's the Roman Catholic Mary, the Pucharist. And that wine, the wine of Babylon. Jeremiah 44, verses 15 on to verse 19. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, uh, the men listening to their wives, feminism, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. See, the Lord will give you every last opportunity until you reach a point where there's no going back for you. Excuse me. Your heart will be so hardened that the Lord finally lets loose. Verse 17. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven, the Roman Catholic Mary, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals, and we were well, and, and were well, and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the, and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured our drink offerings onto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings onto her without our men? This is clearly the Roman Catholic Mary. Boop! Hello! Cakes, the drink offering, the Pucharist. And what do they say? We will not, uh, look at verse 16. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. Okay, get, get the gravity. They 
they've heard, they've seen, they've been through, and yet they still will not be broken. Brethren, there are still people out there who will hear the truth. The doors are not totally closed yet. Pray for a door of utterance. Now go to Matthew chapter 24 now. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But this is for our instruction in righteousness. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. We are going to be reading verses 37 on to verse 39. Matthew chapter 24. Okay? This is talking about in Matthew chapter 24, the time of Jacob's trouble. This is not for any of us of the church of the living God. Okay? This is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, which is for the Jews. This is for our instruction in righteousness. Okay? Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 on to verse 39. But as the days of Noah were, Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be, at the second coming, okay? This is for our instruction in righteousness. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, till it was too late, and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That's He's referring to his second coming. Okay? Doctrinally, this is not for us. Okay? This is still under the law while he was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. Okay? Which was prophesied they were going to reject. But he still had to offer it. Doctrinally, this is not for us, but we can learn something from it. What about these days of Noah? Okay? What about these days of Noah? Go to Genesis chapter 6. Go to Genesis chapter 6. All the way towards the beginning of the scriptures. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Beginning at verse 1, we will read on to verse 7, and we're going to skip around a little bit, okay? Let's begin by reading Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 7. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. Sons of God. Angels. Okay? Angels. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, that for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. He put right there a time limit on how long man is going to live. Now, that did not happen right away. It was a gradual thing, okay? Because we read about how, um, uh, what was it? Aaron lived uh, to be 123 years of age. And also how, uh, what was it? Um, Joseph lived to be something like 130. This wasn't an immediate thing. It happened gradually. That the longest that man's life expectancy will be, will be 120 years. Okay? That happened gradually, not immediately. Okay? There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. 
and they became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Has that changed? Has that changed? You and I, I'm saying this with all charity. You stupid evolutionists out there. And I'm saying that as charitably as I can. Okay, if man is evolving, is man better right now? Has this changed? Yeah, God knows your heart. That's why he needs to break it in order for him to save you. And when you skip over that, I've said that many a times, haven't I? Church of the living God. But see, the doors aren't closed yet. Yet. Verse 6, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Repented, grieved, sorrow. Right there in context. Repented, sorrow. He was sorry that he made man. And he made man for his own pleasure. Revelation chapter 4, you go find that. Does it affect you that you make God sorry you lost people? Of course not. You can't have godly sorrow yet unless the Lord stir you, call you on to him. See, lost people can have godly sorrow, yes, yes. But until the Lord draw you, if you're listening to this, maybe he's drawing you right now. Because he would have all men to be saved. All men. But not being led at gunpoint. Verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast and creeping thing. And the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I made them. Let's read verses 8 and 9 now. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hold your place in Genesis. Hebrews chapter 11. Got to remember, the book of Hebrews is a time of Jacob's trouble epistle. Okay? Hebrews chapter 11, verses 6 on to verse 7. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen, as yet moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. And what is faith? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And in the Old Testament, the faith that they had is what the Lord would do, will do. As today, our faith is in what he has done. Meaning, the death, burial, and resurrection. We have faith on what he has done. Where in the Old Testament, 
It is what he will do. See. Okay. And also now, go to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. Verses 1 on the verse 5. Uh, verses 2 on the verse 5. Okay? In 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 on to verse 5. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Yeah, calling themselves Christians, but living as the world. And hence, those who are of the world, being led astray by those who are calling themselves Christians and are not of the church of the living God, that's why it's very important to mind the way you walk, brother or sister. And through covetousness shall they with feign words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person. Eight people. Eight people. Noah, Shem, Ham, Japheth. Okay? Four men. They each had a wife. Four people. And what is a person's spirit, soul, and body? Okay? That's all the person's spirit, soul, and body that were on the ark. Very few. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. A preacher of righteousness. As in the days of Noah. Men's hearts were evil continually. They were marrying and giving in marriage. Go back now to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, picking up at verse 11. Picking up at verse 11 in Genesis chapter 6, and we will read on to verse 13. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And then our Lord commands him to make an ark. And that is in type, the ark of our Lord Jesus Christ, who when the floods come, okay, we get out. We get out. We go into the ark before the flood comes. We go in that we may go out. Hello? See? What is that? That's a type of the redemption of the purchased possession. We go into the ark. Door is closed on the ark. And then comes the flood. We're in the ark and we get brought up. See? Skip down now to verse 18. But with thee will I establish my covenant. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And look at verse 22. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. As he commanded him, he had faith in what the Lord was going to do. See. See. Are we there yet when the doors are shut? No. They are shutting. But again, brethren, we need to pray for a door of utterance. And we need to keep that there until the Lord said unto us otherwise. Okay? 
Now, let's look in Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Come. Uh, come up hither. Verse 5. And Noah did according unto all the Lord commanded him. And, and he went into the ark, shut the door with what uh, the Lord commanded him to do. The waters came on the earth. See, that's a type of the catching away. We, the church of the living God, we are in Christ. We get caught up, then psh, comes judgment. It doesn't have to be that way for you, you know. You just have to get over yourself. And now, we were, I was going to touch on where it says the days of Lot, but we're not going to, I'm not going to, okay? Not going to. Turn now to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Now, I did a video uh, maybe a year or two years ago uh, touching on this, but we're going to hit it today, okay? Um, when challenged, I, okay? I'm going to step on some of your toes now. I'm going to step on some of your toes. We're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay, we're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, all 23 verses. This isn't going to be expository, but 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, fleshly, even as unto babes in Christ, carne, fleshly, as pertaining to the flesh. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For where, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Let me, let, let's, let me help you a little bit with this. For while one saith, I am of Ruckman, and another, I am of Brian, are ye not carnal? Oh, Brad, you didn't, yes, I did. Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? Let me help you again. Who then is Ruckman? And who is Brian? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Let me help you again. I have planted, Brian watered, but God gave the increase. God gave the increase.
So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth. But God, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Reward. Not salvation. Reward. Okay? No, look at that. Look at that verse. Okay? Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Rewards. Kingdom of heaven inheritance. That kind of thing. Okay? For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. If you are of the church of the living God. God does not dwell in temples with, made with hands. Okay? Okay? Ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost if you are truly saved and born again. Who is the Holy Ghost? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is our Lord Jesus Christ? God our Father. The Lord is that Spirit. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. God lives within you. If you are of the church of the living God. Okay? According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another man buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the foundation. Not a man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Not a man. It's God who gives the increase. You're of the church of the living God. My brother. My sister. Who are you listening to? The Lord through the scriptures? Or have you given that on to a man? God will use men. Yes. 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 But it is God who gives the increase. You know... The devils call people Denlingerites. And I hate to say this to you, but there are some of you out there that are in fact Denlingerites. And you know, Brother Brian, Brother Brian, bless his heart and soul, um, he has rebuked several of you personally I would Im only imagine I would hope but there are those out there who have put Brother Brian up here Who, who, who is guiding you? God will use men. Yes, he will. But who gives the increase? Verse 6. But God gave the increase. See, Paul is addressing people who are making, who are setting up himself and Apollos as their, their, as their authority. Who's your authority? Who's your authority?
Verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, gold, silver, precious stones will abide fire. Okay? Wood, hay, and stubble, they go up like a puff. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. This is not talking about purgatory or anything like that. Okay? The works that you do for reward in the kingdom of heaven, remember, we are called on to good works. Okay? We are. Not to save ourselves. Okay? Not to stay saved. But for kingdom of heaven inheritance. Okay? Okay? And see, that's why it's imperative for you, brother, sister, church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth to align your life according to the scripture. Okay? If any man's work abide which he hath built upon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. You know, the wood, hay, and stubble. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Meaning that the works that you thought you did, that the Lord would be pleased of, whoo, go up like a puff. But see, what the Lord will guide you on to. Ha! Verse 16 to the close of the chapter. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Let's continue. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, separate, which temple ye are. Gotta watch how you're living, boy. You're saved, born again, converted, sealed until the day of redemption. You have the Lord Jesus Christ living within you. God the Father and the Lord is that spirit. Okay? That's why we're supposed to align ourselves with the scriptures, that our lives reflect the scriptures. See? But see, if you're fashioning everything around a man, are you not carnal? Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Now the fool has said in his heart there is no God. But see, if someone is wise in this world, to the world, it's foolish for those of us to have faith on our Lord Jesus Christ, to live according to the scriptures. See, unto the lost world, that's foolishness, isn't it? Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. I beg your pardon. So, in their eyes, you want to be wise? In reality, become a fool unto them. Come to the Lord on his terms. Broken, trite. Believe on him. Cry out to him because you will if you're broken. Fear the Lord. And brokenness and contrition. You'll call on him. I, I, if you're truly broken and contrite and have to fear, fear of going to hell, you're going to call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're just, it's, that's just the way it is.
call on him in brokenness. He will save you. Because it's all a matter of your heart. See? And jumping over brokenness and contrition, you're not allowing the Lord to deal with that. But it's all up here for dear people. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Oh, I thank thee, uh, Father in heaven, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast delivered them unto babes. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men. For all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Yes, there are ministers out there that our Lord uses for your edification. But look at verse 21. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. And every one will give an account of ourselves unto God. Who are you listening to? Who is your authority? Mine is the Lord Jesus Christ, God my Father, and his word, the perfect, given by inspiration, authorized version of the scriptures. Because you got to remember too, brethren. Go to Acts. Go to Acts. Go to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Who, who do we follow? Hmm? Who do we follow? Acts chapter 16, verses 6 on to verse 10. Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia. They were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Who is the, the Holy Ghost? And the Lord is that spirit. So the Lord forbid them to preach the word in Asia. Because the Lord was directing them. After they were come to Mysa, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit, and the Lord is that Spirit, suffered them not. God giveth the increase. And they passing by Mysa came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Note, the Holy Ghost, Spirit, the Lord, one and the same. Okay, not three divine persons that make, no. Why don't we look at this? Who is guiding you? God will use men. God uses men who speak the truth from Scripture. Like Brother Brian. Yes, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not attacking Brother Brian. Not at all. The Lord, 
has is guiding him away from you two. The Lord is guiding him away from you two. Okay? Because remember, brethren, John chapter 21. John chapter 21. Verses 15 under verse 25. Okay? John chapter 21. Verses 15 on to verse 25, okay? The Lord is guiding him away from this platform, okay? He is preaching what the Lord would have him to preach, okay? Okay? John chapter 21, beginning at verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Shimon Peter, Shimon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Lovest thou me more than these? Lovest the Lord more than the world? More than the opinions of men? He saith to him again the second time, Shimon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. You love me more than your own opinion, your own self? Because think about this. How many times did Peter deny the Lord? And he denied him because he was afraid of man. He saith unto him the third time, Shimon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Are you praying that the door, that the Lord open unto you a door of utterance? There's, there's still opportunity. There's still chance. The Lord hasn't closed them all. Might seem that way. It might seem that way. But here, here's the here's the point. Verse 18. Verily, verily I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither, whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither. Thou wouldest not. When you were young, you went where you wanted to. But when you were old, because you walked with the Lord, you have kept the faith. Another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. Die as a martyr is what he's telling him. This spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. And how do you follow the Lord? By the example given to us of Paul. Okay? There are many men out there who can give you these examples. But you cannot elevate a man above the authority of Scripture. But some of you do. I know you do. I know you do. Verse 20. 
Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. What else can I say? I don't care what the Lord has called you on to. Because I am supposed to follow the Lord as he would have me to follow him according to the scriptures. What he has called you on to, whatever it is, that's what he has called you on to. We are one body. Yes, we are. But our all eyes are all, we all have different functions within that body. Okay? What he has called you on to do it's not what he has called me on to do, to do, okay? And vice versa, perhaps. As long as you, brother, sister, are walking in accordance with the scriptures and going where he would have you to go, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But where he would have you to go might not be where he would have me to go. And vice versa. See. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I hope you do. I hope you do. Because every one of us is going to give an account of ourselves to God. Not to a man. Not to a fellow man who will die. Okay? And see, the door of utterance. Because one door has closed onto a beloved brother... That does not mean that all doors are closed, people. Do you get it? Because an end has come, perhaps, for one brother on one area of ministry. Doesn't mean that it's the end for everybody. Because who's doing the leading? Who's doing the guiding? Jesus saith unto him, If I will, if I will, the Lord, oh, really, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Uh, y y follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad about among the brethren that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him that he shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is, this is the disciple which testifieth of these things and wrote these things. 
And we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself should not contain the books that should be written. Amen. And, and, and let's go to where we began. Go back now to Colossians. Let's finish this where we began. Let's go for a full circle, okay? Go to Colossians chapter 4. Verses 1 under verse 6. Masters, give your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer. And watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. A door of utterance. They ain't close yet. It's getting there, yes, but it ain't close yet. On this platform, for some, maybe. Maybe. But where's the Lord? Where's the Lord guiding you? That's the point. That I may that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak, as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom, the fear of the Lord, toward them that are without redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Pray for a door of utterance, brethren, until the Lord says that's enough. Pray for boldness. Pray for one another. Because we are all of his body, the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. But he has me walking on the path that he wants me to walk on. He has you walking on on the path that he will have you to walk on. Whatever that may be. We're not, we're all within the ministry of reconciliation. But some he gives teachers, preachers, evangelists, so on and so forth. Some of you are uh, tractors, some of you uh, preach. Some of you street preach. The way is not shut yet. And follow the Lord yourself, brethren. Just because things in one area of ministry might be coming to an end for a beloved brother doesn't necessarily mean that it's the end for all of you. And who knows what the Lord will do? We're on borrowed time. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the door is not shut yet. Pray. Pray. That a door of utterance may be given. That you may speak as you ought to speak. It's going to be it for this video. I love you. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. 
and consider these things. And until the Lord tells you, until the Lord tells you, fight the good fight of faith. Okay? We'll see you in the next video.